we've seen in, in the private markets in terms of um, on the way up for valuation and then on the way back down. Is, have you seen this before? Is there anything that, uh, that makes this totally unique or, or you've seen this movie before? I think we've seen it before. Um, you get a complete dislocation from fundamentals and then the public markets say, no, that still matters. And eventually it works its way back down. But it takes some time. It's not immediate. Should we be surprised that the... Uh, that the you know unwashed public uh, know more than the, than all the well-heeled uh, VC investors. Well, I don't know if it's that. It's just that there's been so much cheap capital, and when there's that so much it's cheap capital, the Fed, the central bankers around the world. Uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's looking for a place to go, and late-stage venture capital is where a lot of it has gone. Um, and you know, to be fair, the opportunities are large, right? These are global opportunities in various sectors that are being disrupted by technology and they're really big opportunities so it isn't crazy um, to be investing in them and you know we're excited about a lot of things that are going on but you've got you know in 2010 before a company went public on average they'd raised 63 million dollars today on average they've raised 250 million that is a gigantic increase over less than problem. a decade. The euphoria so, is in the VC stage, not in the public market stage for some of these things. And these companies are way more mature. Well, they're more mature, but they've raised a lot more. And they're typically taking a little bit longer to go public, too. Um, and you'll see some of them do very well as a result. I mean, right now we're talking about a lot of the ones that haven't, but there's a number that have. The ones that haven't have one thing in common. They tend to have losses and mm -hmm. profits maybe years down the road, but with all kinds of things in the S1 that say maybe we never make a profit. That's right. So unit economics, you know, it's a continuum that, you know, we see and it's growth at all costs with a lot of cheap capital. When the capital gets less cheap and less available, you, know, you get a swing back to unit economics. And, you know, at times you can go too far in one direction. Uh, um, and, you know, we've been a little bit far on the growth at all costs side. It is the digital technology angle component, is it, is it like mandatory to to, to get uh, Silicon Valley excited. Can you just do dog food or does it have to be, you know, can you just do a, an exercise bike or does it have to be, you know, AI is telling you, you know, how to... How, <laughs> yeah, well, there's buzzwords, right? And, and you know, right. certain buzzwords, the joke is that, you know, you get 3x more um, by like using dot one. Com. It's uh, like yeah. adding dot com <laughs> to it. That didn't, yeah. yeah, crypto. That yeah. didn't work so well. To forget. No, it didn't. Um, but, you know, there are some things that have changed, right? I mean, tech-enabled businesses are everywhere. Most public companies now call themselves something related to technology, even if traditionally they haven't been. Even if it's true or not. Well, you know, that's for them to decide. But it's, um, you know, so as I said, really it is everywhere. So there's a reason for optimism in terms of technology and the impact that it's having. Um, but it doesn't mean that all companies should be, you know, valued forever without profits, right? Has it changed how the VC community is looking at deals that they're doing today? Or we sit, I sit mostly at the early stage. It takes a long time for that to trickle to us. Um, now, it's going to hit... The late stage, the late stage market first. Obviously, if they're investing with the hopes of going public in 12 months, and the public markets are telling them that the multiples have changed, they have to adjust. Um, but again, it's a lagging, it's a slow process. It's going to take a few months. But you know, if the markets continue the way they are in terms of how they're valuing some of these, that will eventually change. What What do you like right now? What What do you see that's coming along that doesn't necessarily have a buzzword like AI or crypto, or one of those things in it? Is there something new that we haven't heard about yet? The next buzzword? Well, uh, yeah, the buzzword's going in and out of style. I mean, I'm spending a lot of time in digital health. I think it's particularly interesting. Consumers aren't still aren't paying for healthcare in this company in this country, um, but there's an awful lot of opportunity to take some of the best of, you know, kind of consumer technology best practices. So thinking about the consumer and everything um, that you do and kind of make sure that that consumer journey is great. So whether it's, you know, it's convenience, it's value, it's also just everything that the company is doing and orienting around is to make that end-to-end -end experience wonderful. That has never, or it hasn't really been the case in healthcare given who pays. So you're seeing a lot of new approaches, rethinking that um, kind of from the ground up, thinking, okay, the patient actually is the consumer here. Let's think about you know, how we make this experience better, which ultimately hopefully leads to better outcomes and better value. I've heard that the, those types of healthcare apps, though, are already getting commoditized. People are looking at the information saying, okay, this is great. We're going to put it into this watch. We're going to put it in these places, but we're not sure we can ever make money off of that. Well, that's true in any sector, right? Yeah. There's going to be things that aren't, don't necessarily have staying power. So that's a question we ask ourselves all the time. Like, is this a standalone company? Is this a feature? Would this be 
um, you know, better off in somebody else's application, somebody else's distribution, or does this have legs? Can this be something that stands alone and ultimately is a sustaining company? All right, Ellie. So you're at this point at, at, at full speed of having I mean, things are. It's not the end of the world for any of this. It's not the end of the world. I mean, there. We've seen this fall apart before. What's the next big thing? Can you tell me what, what, where should I put some VC money right now? What do I need? <laughs> I need revenue growth. I need a technology component. And I need a, an eventual profit. Has it got to be social media? I hate social media. It does not have to be social media. I think you'd be the Internet of a things, little bit hard AI, to get what's, funded in social media right now. <laughs> what, do I, what should I do? It? Well, <laughs> Bitcoin. I don't know about Bitcoin. What do you mean um, you don't know about it? Have you thought about it? Of course we've thought about it. So we're, you know, personally, we are spending more time on, you know, kind of the infrastructure, less on the actual currency. What, um, if you want to call it a currency, that, mean, that's a discussion in and of itself. Right. Um, but you're seeing a lot in mobility. You're seeing a lot in autonomous vehicles. You're even seeing uh, venture dollars go into aerospace. So it's, you know, there are... It, while it used to be, you know, kind of strictly a focus on software, or that's how yeah, some people right. used to characterize it, um, as I said, you know, kind of technology is increasingly powering most industries, and as a result, you're seeing investment um, broaden across multiple sectors. All right.